Welcome to another one of my tutorials. Today I will be teaching you how to make uh, mohair wigs with tails. Kind of like this one. This one's braided. I'll show you how it looks unbraided. This certainly isn't an original idea. It's been around for a very long time. I've seen it on many doll websites as well as various makers on Etsy and the like. So this has three tails. These ones are hand sewn, but you can pick however you'd like to do it. Simply take your favorite wig pattern and uh, sew the tails right on in. So I'll show you how to make the tails. This is a piece of faux fur and it still has the um, manufacturer's edge, the selvage, and it's kind of stiff and glued feeling. It's really icky, so we're going to cut that off because it will affect how the wig stretches after it's made. And cutting it out before, cutting a wig out before you've cut the selvage off can be kind of a pain in the butt. Now you want to be careful not to cut the pile of the fur because you'll end up with short chunks that could be icky looking when you make your final wig. You'll always get a bunch of fur. Make sure you pull it off and throw it away so that any pets or children don't get it and eat it and choke. Okay. So think about how long you would like your tails to be and how many tails you would like. The tails on this particular wig are about six inches long six. or about 15 centimeters. I kind of like that so I'll do another one. So I'll measure six inches on my fabric and mark it and I'll mark it a ways down the fabric. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's fur and it it forgives some things, but not others. Okay, so we got this rough line of about six inches. Now you'll want to think about uh, how thick you want your tails to be. And uh, I like a thin tail, so I would only go about an inch and a half wide because it'll fold over and then it'll be quite small. And we'll go with a good three, three tails, so half an inch, three inches, and three. Here. Looks good. Connect the dots. One, two, three. Now let's cut them out. I'm being quick for the purposes of this tutorial, so my lines aren't perfectly neat. Be careful to not cut the pile. I am careful not to cut the fur by pushing my scissors through the fabric and then kind of dividing the fur as I go. You may be slower because you haven't practiced it as much, but I promise with time you'll get better. We have one piece of a tail. Cool! There's not very much fur flying off of this one because I was careful not to cut it. So now what you'll do is you'll fold this in half, like so, and stitch along this seam. You can hand stitch it. I recommend hand stitching it because it's kind of hard to throw this through a machine. If you're quick and dirty and lazy, uh, you can hot glue it, but it'll be really stiff and it won't look very good.
something to take into consideration before you cut these all out is the direction that the fur goes, the pile, so to speak. So the way this lays, you can see that the fur all grows down, so to speak. Right? You need to consider that when you cut, because if you cut these strips, say, going this direction on the fabric, then the fur will all go sideways when you cut it out. And that wouldn't look very good. Unless that's the look you're going for. One fun thing to do when you're cutting out your wig patterns is actually cut them upside down so the hair goes up, like Mohawks and some uh, more masculine hairstyles. Alright. So, I'm going to pause this and uh, do a little movie magic while I sew these and then we'll come back and I'll show you to attach them to a wig. To a wig.